A few weeks ago, we talked about how voltage drop affects various loads, but in this video, we're going to talk about how voltage drop affects chargers. Welcome to Explorers.life. My name is Nate, and I teach people how to build DIY campers. Let's get started. Now we've already talked in depth about what voltage drop actually is. So this video is going to just expand on those principles. So if you don't really understand the concept of voltage drop, go back and watch the previous video, which I'll link in the video description. So let's say we have our charger and our battery five feet away from each other. That means five feet of positive wire and five feet of negative wire for a total of 10 feet of wire. We're gonna be using six gauge wire because that's the largest that fits into the terminal of the Victron Orion 121230. Now the Battleborne battery, it needs to be charged at a max voltage of 14.6 volts to get it all the way to full. And the Orion is charging at a rate of 30 amps. So I'm going to use my wire sizing calculator here uh, that I'll link to in the video description below to say that 30 amps charging at 14.6 volts with 10 feet of wire and then sliding the voltage drop slider is going to show that that's approximately 1% voltage drop. So what does that mean? That means that if our charger over here is charging at 14.4, I'm sorry, 14.6 volts on this end, and we have 1% voltage drop on this circuit, by the time it gets to the batteries, it's going to be charging at a rate of 14.45 volts. So it's a little lower there, but it's not much. It is something to consider though. So I was having a, a conversation with one of, uh, one of my colleagues the other day that he was saying that he, he uses 10 gauge wire on this. Now 10 gauge marine wire is rated for somewhere north of 60 or 70 amps. So it's well within parameters of what this is going to charge. So let's see if we plug all of these numbers into the calculator using 10 gauge wire, what happens? So I left 30 amps in the calculator, 14.6 volts and 10 feet of length. And then I had to slide the voltage drop slider up to where it was recommending 10 gauge wire. That gives us two and a half percent voltage drop. So I'm using red for our 10 gauge wire and that's gonna give us two and a half percent voltage drop. We're still gonna be at 14.6 as the power's going this direction to charge our battery bank. And now that means if we're 14.6 on this end with two and a half percent voltage drop on this end, that means that we're going to be charging our batteries at 14.235 volts. So this means that this battery isn't actually ever going to get 100% full if we're using undersized wire for the sake of voltage drop, even though that the max ampacity of the wire is well within parameters. So shameless plug here to our store where we have these wiring kits. That's why we use six gauge wire in our Orion DC to DC charger wiring kits. So we don't have this issue. So this concept is the same regardless of if you're using Victron equipment or Midnight equipment or Magnum or Renogy or whoever. It's the same principle uh, for all of your chargers, whether that's DC to DC chargers, solar charge controllers, inverter chargers, any of that kind of stuff. But I will say with Victron equipment, now not with the Orion DC to DC charger, but specifically with the MPPT, you can actually get a smart battery sense that connects to the battery itself and it will wirelessly tell the MPPT solar charge controller actually what the battery voltage is while it's charging so that the MPPT solar charge controller can compensate for any kind of voltage loss in the system. Now, I don't do that in any of the diagrams at explorers.life slash solar wiring diagrams, but that is kind of an advanced technique to get around this issue if need be. So the next thing that we can talk about with chargers is placement of, let's say, a DC to DC charger here. I've seen the question come up a few times asking where is it appropriate to place a DC to DC charger? 
Should it be closer to the house battery bank or should it be closer to the starting battery? Because it does need to go in between the two. So I'm gonna use red for all of my numbers that are in between the starter battery and the DC to DC charger and black for the DC charger to the house battery bank. Let's say that this is 20 feet away, which means 40 feet of wire, which is 20 feet of positive and 20 feet of negative. Six gauge wire, because that's the largest that will fit in this particular unit. And it's gonna be pulling 30 amps. So plugging that into the calculator, 30 amps, 14.6 volts, a length of 40 feet with six gauge wire is gonna give us somewhere in the ballpark of three and a half percent voltage drop. Which means that by the time these 30 amps get from the starter battery that's powered by the alternator over to the Orion 121230 charger, those 14.6 volts, by the time voltage drop is figured in, is gonna be 14.0 volts. Now, does that matter? The Orion Smart, it has an input voltage of eight to 17. So as long as the voltage hitting the Orion, heading in this direction, is anywhere from eight volts to 17 volts, it's going to be able to supply the proper charging voltage coming out of it. So we're fine with three and a half percent voltage drop 5% voltage drop, 7% voltage drop is probably gonna be fine for most cases too, as long as that voltage drop doesn't make it so that we fall below eight volts right there. As long as it's above eight and below 17, it's gonna work just fine to charge our battery. This concept holds true on a lot of the ground deploy solar panels that have a charge controller mounted to the back of the actual solar panel that may sit you know, 30, 40, 50 feet out into the yard. By the time that solar panel hits that charge controller that's mounted on the back of the solar panel, and then that charge controller sends its power 40 feet to the batteries, you know, what's the voltage of, uh, of that power that's going into the battery bank? It's gonna be pretty diminished. And that pretty much wraps up this video, and I hope you learned something new. Now, this is the second part of a voltage drop series, and if you haven't seen the first one, I'll link to it in the video description below. We'll see you next time.